Uh, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, this is kind of what to do with those trees in their second year of growth. If you want to grow them into, um, if you want to grow them into bonsai trees. So first here, this is a English walnut or a black walnut. Can't quite remember. Um, I got this off of eBay for a few quid um, last year. This one, as you can tell, good old Morrison strikes again. This is a white beam. Um, I saw this there for four pounds and the leaves are really big on this. So it's gonna be really interesting to see if I can get any sort of ramification worked into this. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the roots, take them out of their pots, having a look, I'll show you what we should be looking for, what kind of roots we can eliminate that are gonna stop us um, creating a nice bonsai in the future. Let's go with the white beam first and then we'll do the walnut. So first off, you can tell it's a very healthy root system. Um, just starting to get a little pot bound at the bottom there, um, but certainly not suffocating or anywhere near dying. So I'd guess it's probably um, only ever been in this pot or possibly slip potted last year. So your first step, you can use a, a root comb or simply a sort of chopstick type um, tool. And all we're gonna do is work away the soil like this and you basically you just want to keep going until you can clearly see exactly where the main roots are in this tree so once you've got to something a bit more like this just with the top at the top sort of layer like that much that thick once you've got rid of that it's very common if you gain another couple of inches of tree these trees will obviously send their roots down to find water um, in bonsai we want to create a more lateral nice um, spread of roots so we're going to keep sort of digging around and just having a feel trying to find where the first sort of main roots are uh, don't forget you'll be looking out for a tap root as well which will be the chunky one that goes straight down to the bottom so once you've got down to this sort of level you can start to see where the main roots come out um, unfortunately with this one we haven't got a very good root system whatsoever so a lot of the roots um they just kind of spiral around which isn't very good for creating a nice lateral spread but um, we've gained a bit more trunk there's some slight movement there which we didn't have before and very gently you can kind of start to unpick where these roots in fact come from so you start to see okay this one comes out of the base here and goes out that way so that's one all right then we can look for this one and sort of untangle that. Cool, okay, we've got that one. It's a bit of a mess on top here. And then underneath we've got this. Uh, so th I'd probably class this section as the tap root or roots, um, possibly more. Um, if you get to this stage, are you a bit like me and you're not sure what to do, uh, something I'd recommend doing now is just to sort of wash it away in some water. Um, that will clear away a lot of the rest of the soil and allow you to see more clearly. So this is before and this is after. Um, so obviously now you can see a lot more clearly where these roots come from. So next I'm going to bring you in closer and so you can see a bit more clearly which roots we're going to keep. Um, so let's have a... So I think this is the one I pointed out earlier. We'll keep this one. And then down in here... See how, so this one here overlaps. It's only ever going to cause problems in the future. There's some thicker ones here that go straight down. So we get rid of this one. Shorten that one back. Shorten a couple of those as well. So it may seem drastic, but basically if you understand that um, the energy stored within this root system over the winter is now up through the trunk and into these leaves that are ready to burst out. Um, so it really is all about timing. That's why you can get away with cutting so much root off. So right at the bottom here, there's a couple of pretty nasty roots. So we'll get rid of one, two. And I think we're gonna leave it there for today. We don't want to cut all the roots off. Um, but that starts this tree on its way to becoming something sort of bonsai-like. Um, so I thought, uh, I'll tell you how I prepare a pot 
but I really don't want to overcomplicate it for anyone who's a beginner or is not sure what's going on here. Uh, so that's just a drainage screen um, because often, it, you know, when you're using bonsai soils, the particle size can quite often drop through. But again, it's not completely necessary. Uh, if you're using a, you're reusing a flower pot as a training pot like I am, that would be fine um, without. Um, but I'd rather say it than, than not. I'm just gonna mush that down a bit and add some soil in around. Um, this tree came in uh, almost 100% compost. Um, so if you're reusing compost, I don't see how that's really a problem. The tree obviously does grow in that. Um, if you want to implement some sort of more bonsai-like soil, you can do what I've done, which is compost, but then add some larger particle size pieces. As long as it's in something, it, it will supply if it'll be okay. So again, moss is not necessary at all. Don't feel like you have to do this, um, but this is a personal choice for me. Um, I quite like the look of a lot of different types of moss. So quite often I'll just quite literally shove them back in on top. And if you spread them, you know, sparsely like that, they will um, grow over the year. And then lastly, again, completely optional, but you can add some fertilizer just to give it a little bit more vigor throughout the year. But again, it's completely optional. Just add those on top like that. So then we'll water it. So if you wanted to introduce a bit more um, movement into this trunk, you could start to wire. I'm not going to today. All I'm going to do is because of the reduced amount of roots that we now have for this tree, I'm going to take off the first, uh, what we've got, one, two, three, four, five buds, just to this first leaf here. And the reason we do that is just so that this leaf can now support the reduced amount of roots. So reduced roots equals reduced foliage. Um, just helps the tree out and there's less of a demand on those new roots. So now, um, very similar process, um, but we're just gonna have a look at this walnut. Uh, this is a tree I've actually been really excited um, about because I bought it, like, like I said, last year. Um, the whole video is about what to do with your second year's growth. Um, this tree, to me, just looks really cool. And if you look at the trunk, where it's thick at the bottom, quite like bobbly and gnarly, reminds me of like a baobab trunk or, or something like that. It's pretty cool. Um, so we're gonna do the same process and I will get back to you with an update. Uh, so this is really cool. I've only just started really, but you can actually see the walnut itself. Um, that's really cool. Um, I'm gonna bring you in closer to have a better look at that. So because this tree will no longer be using the walnut to survive, no, it's not even connected anymore. But that is pretty cool. Um, we can get rid of the walnut and then in turn the space where that walnut was will be um, supported by more roots. So just sort of combing out these roots so you can already see a much nicer root base to look at there. So again you kind of just need to use common sense with this really but um, for those if you can't really work out obviously this is already quite a radial root base so it's already nice so i'm not going to wash it in water um, just to give these food feeder roots um, a nice good chance of surviving there's nothing really wrong with this it's a really good that's a really good healthy start um, i'm glad that we've uncovered a bit more of the the trunk of this tree so that it begins that nice journey with taper which is really cool really like that um, as far as trimming all we're going to do is if we look at the bottom surface of the tree we can see the tap root that comes out, so we can just cut that off there. Um, and then there's a couple of these thicker roots here. Um, I actually think in this case I might leave those. So again, something like this terracotta pot. This is where um, some sort of netting in the bottom can be very useful. In goes walnut tree. Just gonna wiggle it down a bit. And then that's a good opportunity to fan out these roots in a nice radial fashion. But now we have a bit more trunk to show off, which I think is quite cool. So I'm definitely going to fertilize this one only because those roots are a little bit weaker. Just put one, two, three. And then 
throw rocks back in. And never forget to water. So there we are guys, a bit more of a, a beginner orientated video today. Um, but just sort of share a bit of knowledge on what to do with those um, sort of second year trees, you know, that you want to get started on their way to becoming bonsai. Two very different, very um, unconformative bonsai subjects here. So we have the walnut and the white bean. I hope you've learned something from this video today. If you have, uh, make sure to drop a like and tell me that you liked it. Um, other than that, guys, uh, wherever you are in the world, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.